Benvingudes, benvinguts a un altre episodi de Casella de Sida. Soc Carla Rubio. Què tal? Soc Carles Palanca. Avui tenim eh, entrevista de nou. Carla, Exacte. què passa? Ja no, ja no parlem amb mi, no? Ara ja, si no, ni un altre, ja no parlem de xocs. <laughs> Hem agafat el gustet d'aquest 2022 a convidar a la gent. La gent ens diu que sí, doncs què li anem a fer? Doncs una, una altra entrevista, en English Speed English. Exacte, entrevista en English, com sabeu, sempre en subtítols en València a, a YouTube, eh, en subtítols en cap idioma, a l'àudio del podcast. Exacte. <laughs> que anem a veure, que voleu, que ens doblem com punset, que diga, hello, how are you doing? Bon, bon dia, com està vostè? No, pues no ho anem a fer això. <laughs> vale? No, però en podcast quedaria molt raro. Bueno, sí, podríem, jo que sé. Total, que teniu subtítols en València al canal de YouTube, ja sabeu, li doneu ahí uh-huh. el clic clic i apareixen, vale? Que Exacte. això costa traduir, eh? No us penseu que això ho fem aixina de hi, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> El que sí que anem a fer, jo espero que s'ho passem molt bé. Exacte, perquè... Com, com, com l'efilat, eh? L'efilat prou bé, no? <laughs> Ui, tenim a Peter Orotka. Exacte. Peter Orozca, diseñador de... ¿Y si el señor qui es? Y el señor Peter, Peter ahí... Es algo que me fa moltíssima ilusión. Sí, porque es el diseñador de... A ver si puedo ver casi... ¡Qué pobre! ¡Qué pesamo! De Casmin Encounter. Y Casmin Encounter, como sabeu, es en un de esos tres shocks súper favoritos. Eh, ¿Un shock de culte? Un, po- un poco de culte, sí. Eh, es el shock que va a trencarle regles en les cartes, no? Va dir que cada carta podia fer no coses... No adelantem l'episodi, Ai, Carles. No adelantem l'episodi, però estic introduint el xoc i el que va significar. Que ja m'ho he explicat moltes vegades. Tenim un vídeo... Doncs vídeo. Ja està. Tenim un vídeo de xocs més influents. Fes m'in... com els youtubers, un vídeo. Exacte. Veig-ho-lo per aquí. Un, un vídeo de eh, xocs més influents. Està ahí Cosmic Encounter. Tenim un vídeo de interaccions entre jugadors. Te'n recordes? Sí, de ja fa no sé quantes sí, temporades. Sí, sí. I posarem a Cosmic com que tenia interacció negativa, positiva, moltes coses diferents, sí. moltes sorpreses. És un xoc prou estrany, uh-huh. sempre superdivertit. I ara se clavarem en per Exacte. què. Exacte, i també me va publicar eh, fa temps, eh, fa 40 i pico anys, eh, Dune. Dune, eh, mm. Dune eh, un xoc de conquesta, eh, sí, diplomàcia i, tra- i traïció. Exacte. Eh, molt bé, ahí te he vist preparada. I aprofitem que vaig ser una nova versió d'aquest xoc de Dune, una versió... Ah, vale, pensava, no? aprofitem per a demanar el xoc, i jo, ah, vale. No. Ah, bueno, també, si ens ho enviem, no, 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 jo... no, no t'ho estava entenent, vale, vale, vale. Aprofitem per a eh, que vaig ser ara un nou xoc de Dune, una reimplementació, Dune era un xoc molt complicat de, de trobar, es va re- reeditar a 2019 eh, en la versió, diguem de regles bàsiques per a 6 jugadors. Ideal per a 6 jugadors. Ideal per a 6 jugadors, si millor 6 que no pas 5, uh-huh. eh, que durava, podia durar moltes hores, que n'hi havia ahí moltes voltes, i no era un joc, diguem-ne, molt senzill d'entrar. I ara l'han fet un poquet més senzill, es perden algunes coses, arriba fins a 4 i diuen que inclús se pot jugar molt bé a 2, que jo això ja me flipa el cap que se pot jugar bé a 2, a un xoc de tanta interacció, negociació, etc. Però bueno, n'hi ha un mode i diuen que funciona. No l'hem jugat, eh, perquè no l'hem, no l'hem pogut aconseguir encara en la nostra tenda de confiança, eh? sí. <laughs> Friendly Local Game Store. <laughs> Però, eh, no res, eh, volem preguntar-li avui un poquet a Peter doncs, tota aquesta evolució i com adaptar xocs a diferents temps, no? Sembla que ara n'hi ha una, unes altres tendències. A veure què ens conta el senyor Peter Olotka, que junta Bill Everly, Jack eh, Kittredge, ho diré malament, Jack el seu fill, Kittredge, el altre, el altre. Jack Kittredge, i ara amb el seu fill sí, també, i amb Jack sí. Reda, que bueno, unes històries ahí molt interessants. Anem a veure què ens conta, no? Sí, anem a veure què ens conta el convidat. Anem allà. Ok, so thank you for joining us, Peter. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> so I would like to start Uh, from the very beginning, so like to do a little time travel with your with our audience. Not, so, very, not very long. Not, not very, very long. long. Not no. very long time. <laughs> do I have to find the time traveling alien for this? I mean, yeah. which <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That be a so somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So to the moment you decide to become a game designer and the moment you created Eon products. So how was life back, back then? Because I guess the board game industry was quite different at that moment. Well, yeah, I mean, there was, there was no industry. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we didn't, when we started doing this, there was no industry at all of, of mm-hmm. game designers. Nobody was a game designer. Nobody was. Nobody was a game inventor. Mm -hmm. There were big companies like, you know, Parker Brothers who made games, you know, corporate. 
And the only only company really um, that had today, you know, the ancestors of today's games was Avalon Hill, the Avalon Hill yeah. company, and mm-hmm. maybe several others. But and and uh, you know, I had been in the Peace Corps, uh, mm-hmm. and we came. Uh, uh, Cindy and I were married there, and Greg was born in the Marshall Islands. And Greg still, I just got off. Work, we're working with Greg, you know, so he's in the mm-hmm. business. And uh, so we've been together for a long time. <laughs> and uh, and so we we came to Cape Cod in Massachusetts and, and uh, I got work um, being a community organizer. Mm-hmm. And so I was, uh, you know, organizing for, you know, tenants to get housing and get rent and all this stuff, what like hippies do in the 19th. <laughs> 60s. And along the way, I decided I was just, I, you know, I was just fooling around and having fun. And I thought, you know, we played some games with friends and, you know, I just got tired of risk, you know, rolling yeah. dice. And I, you know, so, so I said, well, I think I'll make my own game. Mm-hmm. And, and then I just, you know, had friends, you know, Jack and Bill and People I knew, and we just started messing around. Mm-hmm. And, and for five years, we played this game called Cosmic mm-hmm. Whatever. We call it the Universe game. And we just played it on the rug, just us. Okay. And, it, you know, we have those old models of it. You can see it online if you dig mm-hmm. around. And we just did that. We weren't being anything. We were all kind of, you know doing social, you know, justice work and stuff like mm-hmm. that and, and playing games. <laughs> so, and that's how Cosmic started. And, mm-hmm. and we made a list of all the things that we didn't want the game to do. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's nice. That we didn't want it to do. We didn't want it to roll dice. Uh-huh. Okay. Right there. Interesting. Okay. We didn't. We wanted it to be different every single time you played it, mm-hmm. which led to well, every person playing had to be different from everybody else. <laughs> that's not um, that's not a direct answer. That's something very creative, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we just check, 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 and then <laughs> and um, I think I think those with those premises. Oh, I know another thing was we wanted the game. And this was way ahead of our time. Mm-hmm. We wanted the game to appeal to women and men, mm-hmm. girls and boys, not just the guys, you know, mm-hmm. that the game had to be inclusive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was a rule. And um, there may be some other rules. The, mm-hmm. the idea was that to start doing something new, and this can, I think this applies to any creative project, mm-hmm. start with a clean slate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And maybe have this big generic general goal in the mm-hmm. sky, which you you know you work under that, and and make these principles that you want to stick to. Quite ambitious, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's what happened. So that's how we started it, mm-hmm. and we built this funny little game, and we had our friends play it, and everybody thought it was hilarious, and and with we had five aliens. And five. we played it for five years. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then we put it in a box and we went to Parker Brothers. Uh, my friend uh, and partner, Bill Everly, when, uh, had an uncle who worked to make Nerf foam and he knew Parker Brothers. So we got an invitation and we went up and we took this giant box. Like, I'm serious. It was this <laughs> deep, and this big. And we spray painted it blue. And we went to Parker Brothers, you know. And, uh, you know, with our blue jeans on, you know, you know, which, which I still have, you know, still have. <laughs> and so we go into Parker Brothers, like looking like this, only we were a little bit younger. And so, and, and the guy goes, how does this work? Well, we had this big dodecahedron mm-hmm. die that we made out of cardboard that you rolled to, mm-hmm. to say which alien you were going to go to. Okay. Mm-hmm. Big thing. And the guy rolled it five times. It always rolled the same color. And he said, see you later. <laughs> and you're going, That's it. It doesn't work. What, all it does is roll one color mm-hmm. and go away. So we left the box there. We said, fine, keep the junk. We walked out. Oh, we, we walked out. 
walked out. Two weeks later, we had a phone call. It says, everybody's pretty interested in this thing. Will you guys come back up and show us how it really works? <laughs> so we go back up, we go in, and uh, and we show, and they they said this is pretty cool. So they so they gave us a contract and they paid us five thousand mm-hmm. dollars, which was an enormous sum in mm-hmm. 1970, whatever that was. I mean, it's like a fortune. Mm-hmm. So we said we're the next monopoly. We have everything. We're great. And they made a game. I have it in my basement called Encounter, mm-hmm. and it was just had it was a big box like this, thin encounter, the aliens, there weren't any really aliens, they were just like pieces of paper. Okay. And the only way you knew one alien from the other was like, there was the plant and its token was a little leaf. So you put your little, and it was ugly. And they actually built it. And then they, then they called us up and said, we're canceling the deal. Mm-hmm. You can keep the money. Marketing says space doesn't sell. <laughs> the next day, Star Wars and I came. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and so we said, "All right, we'll do it ourselves." So we went to a, we went to some conventions, some science fiction conventions with our contraption game. Mm-hmm. We, we we spruced it up a bit. And the players at the science fiction convention went crazy. They had never seen it. It was better than we had more aliens, you know. And so they just loved it. And so we found a partner who had $10,000. And he gave us $10,000. So we cut him in on the deal. And we got a warehouse. So we made our own boxes. Wow. And we tried to sell it ourselves as Eon yeah. products. Yeah. yeah. And we did that for a while. We made, you know, four or five other games who were all pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, that went away. Finally, it was too much work to do it yourself. Yeah. Um, You know, so we got the, over time, other companies published it. So there are, Mm -hmm. you know, I I don't know, seven or eight different companies published it in different versions. And aliens are from Sweden, France. (laughs) All they made it, their aliens all look different, which I love. Yeah. Mm and that's how that's how it went. That's so that's Amazing. that's basically the story. We're still mm-hmm. doing it. All the, everybody who is there is still here. And how how do you feel about kind of so, so one of the most shocking things about the game, of course, is that every alien changes the, the role in a very big way. Yes, <laughs> that's that, that is the that's the whole point of life. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking the <laughs> rules. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, really, it it really is. What you want in a game is to have an experience that isn't what you're doing every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I don't want to make a game about, you know, how to make a chair. (laughs) Although, I mean, you could make a game. I'm like... (laughs) <laughs> maybe ikea yeah, so, so. ikea yeah. <laughs> exactly. ikea ikea you're right ikea ikea does it with us actually i, I mean you could have the ikea, IKEA olympics <laughs> so, so people come in they have their box it's timed <laughs> go <laughs> no dice no, 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 no lots of little screws each one a different <laughs> It <laughs> only fits this one hole that's you know you can't see unless you're lying underneath with a telescope and a microscope. And then you can put the screw in. Okay, hold, hold that thought. That, we, that's a good we, game. We, we like might have something. We might have something there. <laughs> I, I think that's good one. <laughs> and then, uh, well, h- how do you feel about the? I don't know if you look back or or uh, at that time and, and how the influence that Cosmic has had in many games, of course. One of the the most important games that have acknowledged the influence of Cosmic Encounter is Magic the Gathering, which is breaking the rules all the time, and every player gets to choose which rules they break. So it's that's right. So so how do you feel when you see those kind of of success stories uh, of uh, yeah, Richard? Well, Richard Richard Garfield is a colleague of mine, and mm-hmm. we talk you know every five years or so, and we say hi, and he, you know he's been we we had a Cosmic Con, and he he was our guest of honor, you know, digitally in from wherever he was, and I love Richard. His he's one of the nicest 
you know, people in the business. And, and so <laughs> I said, I need a quote from you. And I love this quote. You must have seen it. Cosmic Encounter is the only game that I played so much I had to wash the cards. <laughs> Richard Garfield. Here's the guy, the king of card games. He said, it's the only game I played so much I had to wash the cards. I said, that is brilliant. He's so brilliant. <laughs> That's That's great. Nice. That's great. So, now, I've never played Magic the Gathering. Mm -hmm. I really actually don't play a lot of games at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, I play the most as Cosmic and, and my uh, my grandchildren, the older ones, who are now 13 and 18, started playing when they were five and, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know eight. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, they've been my, uh, a lot of my play testing uh -huh. came little kids. That's great. Uh, That's great. Little kids, and because they they don't have any, you know, they have, so they make their own. And the funniest deal, the funniest alien in the game, um, I think, is the bride. Mm -hmm. And the bride was Lila calls me one day from California, and she's like seven or eight or nine, and she, Grandpa, Grandpa, I got an idea for a great alien. <laughs> It's called the gown. She called it the gown. I actually like the gown, but uh, she's called. And this was because her uncle Greg, my son, was getting married. Okay. Ah. And she was all. She was all thinking about. It's called the gown, and it marries other aliens. <laughs> I'm going, Lila. That is the best. <laughs> so this well. is the funniest alien in the game. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Nice. Period. And I don't know if you, there's some videos out there. Um, uh, Shut up and sit down. Did did yeah. one where where they were playing, and the brides in the game, and they were on the floor. They were holding onto their sides, because, <laughs> you know, because of course the bride gets half of your cards <laughs> in alimony when she divorces you. <laughs> <laughs> so much but fun. I say, you you have to have fun, you yeah. know, and and yes. part of the fun is is listening to listening to other people, and I think listening to children. Mm -hmm. who, who have senses of humor that sometimes adults don't appreciate, you know, yep. so I kind of never lost that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it shows, it shows. Nice. Yes, because we see, what we see in Cosmic Encounter is that every alien has a different, very different power. Some, some you can think they're overpowered, but they're in balance if you want to... Mm -hmm use the nowadays yeah. uh, words that they, they use that this is game is very balanced this game is very <laughs> and so but what I found here's the balance yeah 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 but what I found most, most interesting about Cosmic Encounter is exactly that that is in balance and uh, it is balanced by the people who is playing that's right that's right. There's balance in there, and the balance comes out of the environment. So each game is its own environment, and and of course, you know, in cosmic, the whole everybody can lose, mm -hmm. and everybody can win if mm -hmm. the circumstances. You with the, all the, by the with all the stuff that's in there now, everybody can do anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but but everybody can win. You can all lose together. You can all win together. One person could be twelve. I mean, you just. Yep. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. and so you have to think of the universe because we're such a little, tiny little thing in the universe, and mm -hmm. all of this stuff is out there. So, you know, and here they are. <laughs> They're really here. You guys don't know this, but. They're really here. Yeah. Be, be careful. <laughs> we'll watch out. Please, yes, I want the loser to be true. <laughs> well, really like the loser one. is true. The loser is true. It happens to me quite a lot. So. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, so perhaps we can move to the to the next uh, kind of topic related to cosmic, the original cosmic, which yeah. is when you did. Perhaps we can show it. Yeah, cosmic encounter no. duel. Duel, right? Cosmic encounter duel has a great story. So, when I talked about playing with my grandchildren when they were small. I must have played hundreds of two-player games. Mm -hmm. Two players. Yeah. We played with this, you know, we, our set. With the original Cosmic Encounter. Yeah. yeah. Two players. Okay. The original, original game that we built had two, two, a two-player version. Mm -hmm. And then it, on the, the aliens, it kept saying, do not use a two-player game. Yeah, sure. Right? <laughs> so, so when we got it. As we got smarter in the business, we said, okay, mm -hmm. we're not doing this. Do not use in a two-player game anymore. But 
um, Bill Everly and I uh, spent a lot of time um, working on the two-player cosmic game because I knew, having played two-player cosmic games mm -hmm. with uh, Tess and Lila for decades mm -hmm. and having fun, Mm -hmm. I mean, you have fun and they would play games with each other and have fun. And I say, if you can play a game and have fun, make it a two player game. And they say, oh, you can't make it a two player game. <laughs> <laughs> They're wrong, 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 wrong. They see the two limits. And so we made Cosmic Duel. And at the time, um, Fantasy Flight Games, I worked on that for years, mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. trying to get them convinced. And, and Corey Konazaka, who was the uh, yeah. the go-to guy there. Corey's the one who put it through for He says, we're going to do this for you, okay? Yeah. <laughs> we're do it. And you. so we made Cosmic Encounter Duel. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you know, and, and what's fun about that is that we brought aliens in from the main game as, you know, yeah. ambassadors yeah. or emissaries. Yeah. Yeah. And so they show up. So you're in the yeah. Cosmic Encounter Duel. And here comes the mind yeah, to yeah, give yeah. a little advice. It's probably maybe not good advice either. You know, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to I just wanted to really get that on the market because I think um, I think cosmic is in itself. Hmm. Here's what no nobody really gets: the core of cosmic is that. Give me a good call. I need a good call. Okay, these two. The core of Cosmic is that two aliens are meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the core. That's what's happening. All this other stuff. So there's obviously a two-player game in this game. This is the heart of the game. Now, players say, Cosmic Counter, the heart of the game is the alliances. Without alliances, it's nothing. They're wrong. Cosmic Encounter at its core is two aliens meeting in space and saying either ah and running away or ah going that way or mm, let's get together. Yeah, you like me. And that's the core. That's the basic game. Mm -hmm. Two aliens, not 12, unless you're somebody else, but yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, and so cool. and and everybody was everybody disputes me on that. You no, know, it's my game. So <laughs> I'm telling you that two aliens meet and something happens. Yeah. Everything else is fringe. And <laughs> and so Cosmic Duel is doing quite well. And there's and Fantasy Flight is is uh I think they were surprised. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although we like a lot to play with with our friends, Cosmic Encounter. Having Cosmic Encounter Duel to play yeah. the two of us is fantastic. Yeah. And you have the ambassadors and it's like, oh <laughs> this one from the Cosmic Encounter. But in the end, what I feel is it's like when I'm playing Cosmic Encounter Duel, the feelings yeah. that I have, all the bluffing and everything is yeah. it's the same. It feels the same. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Two aliens meet. Yeah, exactly. And so how did you reach that solution? It was just that it worked from the very beginning or you look for that? In... We, we, um, we, we did a lot of work on that and we had... I don't know, maybe a dozen, maybe more versions of, mm. of you know, what we call two-player cosmic. And when finally, when when uh, Fantasy Flight finally caved in after my badgering of them mm -hmm. and, and got on board, uh, Frank Brooks, who's one of the yep. designers, was was uh, uh, was very, very, very helpful in, in, uh, in, in making Cosmic Duel fit. Mm -hmm. For, you know, we aren't in tune with, with uh, gaming at all mm -hmm. and what's going on. Okay. We just do our own thing. We always have and we have probably <laughs> we always will. But Frank was more in tune with what was because he's at Fantasy Flight yeah. and he's, mm -hmm. you know, he's younger than we are and he's, you know, knows what's what's going on. So a lot mm -hmm. of the stuff that came out uh, in Cosmic Duel that make it make it really work is uh, uh, from Frank. But um, Greg and I and, and Bill um, had a two-player cosmic version online mm -hmm. uh, in tab Tabletop Simulator, mm -hmm. just like, and, and for, I don't know, three years with players from all over the place. Russians were in there playing all the time, mm -hmm. you know, so they were probably making a plot somewhere. But anyway, they were <laughs> But we had all, 
we had all these. Uh, well, my grandparents were Russian, by the way. So oh, yeah. nice, nice, nice. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, perhaps we can we can move to the next. Yeah, we would like to move uh, because we want we don't want to mm-hmm. leave sure. these conversations before talking also mm-hmm. about Dune. <laughs> yeah, Dune. Yeah. Dune is uh, Dune is another game. Um, here's how that happened. The way Dune happened was. We had finished Cosmic Encounter. We had mm-hmm. done, I think, one other game, maybe two. And we were all reading Frank Herbert's Dune novels. Mm-hmm. And on our own, just on our own, said, boy, you know, we could, we could make a really good Dune game. But we didn't know anything about licensing or how that, you know, nothing. Yeah. We didn't mm-hmm. have any of the kind of skills that, you know, you, you have to have to get that published. So we looked around and... and um, it turned out that Avalon Hill, which was the only other, the only real kind of yeah. war game company, mm-hmm. um, had made a Dune game already. Mm-hmm. So I called, I called Eric Dodd, who was the head of Avalon Hill then, and I said, you know, I'm Peter, and we did Cosmic, and everybody kind of knew us in the business, you know, a little bit then, so we had a little reputation. Mm-hmm. It says, oh, well, we already have some guys working on it. All right, All so right. that's over. Can't do it. So two weeks later, we get a call. He says, "We didn't like the guy's version. You guys want to try?" <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> we'll be there. And here's the funny part. So, the problem was that there was going to be there's going to be the, another movie coming out. The Dune, the Bad Dune movie, <laughs> was, was in the wings. Which we didn't know it was the Bad Dune movie. At the time. So. We're working like crazy, and we come up with this, the wheel, yeah. that wheel in the Dune thing. Mm-hmm. We hit a game of our own called Tribute that would, never got published, and mm-hmm. it had a wheel in it. Mm-hmm. And you dialed up this thing, and all the troops you dialed, that's your score, but they're all dead. And so, so if you put them in, I'm playing 30, uh, they're all going to die. Mm-hmm. If I dial 30, so I'll dial 29, and there's only one left, but I won. Or, you know, so that whole mechanism. That's the key to the Dune game, is that wheel. And so we did the game, and it was it was pretty successful. And then the, then the movie came out, and I called Avalon Hill, and I said, put Sting on the cover of the box, because he was one of the, he was the big star at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. You know, they want to republish it. They put Sting on the box, the movie comes out, it flops, and the game stops selling. <laughs> and I, I, I got a royalty check for three cents. I kept... <laughs> I capped it. Oh, it was three pennies. Here's your royalty. <laughs> so the game went down the drain on the bad movie. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, internet grows up. There's mm-hmm. games, uh, you know, board game geek arrives in, in the universe. And the players in there build their own Dune games. And it was this yeah. tribe Dune community. Yeah. We knew about it. Dune was gone. You couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. A couple of years ago, I got a call from John Paul at uh, Gale Force Nine. I know this, this is John Paul. We have all the Dune right. They're going to do a new movie. Here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> and and we want to do your Dune game. Because, because John mm-hmm. Paul and his partner, Peter Simonovich from New Zealand, in college, all they did was play Dune. Yeah. And they want to do this game. They have all the rights. They got it all set up. So wow. he says, and we have to do it in six weeks. It has to be on the shelf. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. And he's, I, we said, you can't do this. He says, I can do it if you can do it. So in six weeks' time, we have that first Doom game mm-hmm. on the shelf. They did it. They actually did it. And the movie comes out. And this time, see, why repeat? The movie's a huge hit. <laughs> yeah. And now we're making, you know, we've got the, all the ex- we're making expansion sets for Doom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, bunch of other things that we can't talk about, uh, you know, for Doom with them. And and it's just like been that it was like time travel. Only this time, <laughs> the movie was good. Yeah. yeah. And we went to, when we went to the movie, you know, I'm going, what if it flops, you know? <laughs> I've been here before. <laughs> yeah, 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 I've been here yeah, before. Yeah. But it was such a thing because the same thing happened. We had a, 
the publisher was yelling, you know, come on, come on, get it done. It was just like the other time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. One time it was good, one time it wasn't. Yep. So that's 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 incredible. And then that then there's all this cult about uh, about the original game and people trying to make their own copies and stuff. And then finally it's re-released in this 2019 kind of kind of uh, version, like with the with the new yes. art and everything. So it's available again. People go buy it and then. Uh, there's now a street kind of a more streamlined version of <laughs> that's what they say right for up to four people uh, shorten in time uh, the movie dude I mean, the, I movie dude. Movie. the movie exactly the movie dude actually if you download okay. if you download the rules from Gale Force yeah. 9 it says uh, rule book movie dune so it is the movie dude <laughs> <laughs> so, and so that when that when they said that that they were going to do that they wanted to do that mm -hmm. my reaction was This game has to be, it has to, here's what you do. The most fun in Dune is putting your wheels there and combat. doing this. That's the most fun. That's unchanged. So, that's unchanged that's, in this version, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's unchanged, but it happens in the first three, four minutes. <laughs> in Dune, the real game, <laughs> it happens in real Dune time. Maybe yeah. next week. <laughs> Maybe next year. But you'll get there. That's real Dune time, and this is comic book Dune time, which is open the box, take out your wheel, boom. Yeah. yeah and that's back. because that's the core thing. And and, mm -hmm. and and so I'm going, we have to get there right away. You just get in there and you have a, you know, a quick interaction and you can win in 35 minutes, 40 minutes and play again. Yeah. Yeah. But it has the same stuff. Yeah. It's got the same, you know. The same leaders with special things that they can do and the skullduggery going on. But basically, it's the interaction. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's because, you know, you want everybody to be able to play Dune and everybody can't play long Dune. Absolutely. It's just not for everybody. No, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's, it's the game that so that been... was the, the decision, the choice about being mm -hmm. doing uh, the shorter version to, to yeah. reach a wider audience now that you after the good movie <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> and and i think it was uh, uh peter Simonovich from um uh new zealand was uh said well we want to put the characters together we want to make you know put the dual characters in you know mm -hmm. the, and for and i was a little skeptical but that was a good idea he had a good idea and uh, so mm -hmm. your publishers sometimes and also help i mean you know you can't do this stuff And be the public. I don't think you can do all those jobs. Yeah. They take different temperaments and different, you know. Absolutely. Different roles. But uh, <laughs> now, Absolutely. for our for our part, the fact that the two key people in in Gale Force Nine and uh, Battlefront were Dune fans, that's why, you know, it, it survived. Mm -hmm. And yes. we had no idea that there were all those Dune games out there on on the internet. You know, all those players. We went, here's the funny story, we went, we got some play testers together from uh, where I live near here in New England, and, and we said we're going to test our new Dune game. This was before we had done anything, either of them. And, uh, these, and, and so I called some gaming clubs and said, Dune, you know, and some guy, no, I didn't know anybody. Guys come in, they walk in, they lay out all the stuff that looks like it doesn't, because they had made <laughs> the Dune game that they Gonna be out going, where'd you get this stuff? Oh, we made it. We made it. <laughs> they had <laughs> these beautiful maps and character. I mean, they had figurine, they had characters, they had everything. And wow. uh they were true fans. And I said, This is gonna be good. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Nice, nice. So how how did it felt to revisit uh, a game? Hmm. What, what were your feelings about doing this new version? Doing it over? Mm -hmm. Oh, loved it. Uh -huh. Loved it. Because you never get it right the first time or the second time or the third. So, sometimes the sting, sting is in the cover, sometimes. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> that's right. It's always something. And so, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's nice to go back and do them. And I like to do variations. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I think I'm pretty sure that we invented expansion sets uh, with Cosmic Encounter. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. know that there were some before that. There might have been, but. This was yeah. the first game that really made that a happening. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. you know, so we tacked them into Dune, you know, Dune expansion sets. Mm -hmm. 
and of course the cosmic expansion sets. Um, yeah. You know, one of the great stories in our company is that um, so there was Jack uh, Kittredge and Bill Eberly and myself and yeah. uh, and Eon Products, and then we have Future Pastimes. Yeah. Future Pastimes is is uh, sort of the design element okay. of, of e products. But over the years, um, uh, I worked as Future Pastimes because the company kind of went away. Mm -hmm. And I did a lot of consulting and stuff for science museums all over the country mm -hmm. and you know, doing exhibits. And when Greg got, uh, uh, when Greg was older, he joined me as a partner. We did. And so we future pastimes mm -hmm. um, and went around doing exhibits and games and mm -hmm. other stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and still that. And that we made that into a little company. Uh, so it's Bill Everly, myself, Greg, and Jack, Jack Rita. And Jack, Jack Rita, Rita. Yep. was the true fan. Jack Rita wrote us letters when he was 11 years old, <laughs> you know, fan letters. <laughs> and so Jack now is, is, is uh, I just got, we've been play we've been working on stuff all day. I'm saying we work on Skype. That's this is our office. You are in my office. Okay, you're great. actually in 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 here where my, uh, my <laughs> daughter's staying here. So, so you can see the snow out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not my house. I'm Kristen's house. Right now. Yeah. So yeah, anyway. Jack Jack was a true fan. He he was compiling yes. all the all the races, all the aliens yep. for Cosmic Encounters. Yeah, the, the, the website is yeah the warp the, the website warp. is is still up and uh, it's still it's hanging on by a thread. <laughs> we keep talking about how we got to rescue it, but we never have time. No, Jack is brilliant and he he contributes so much. And he's so much of him is in all of this cosmic stuff. I mean, he has got ideas in here that he probably did, you know, when he was seven. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. I mean, he's just uh, he's great to work with and lots of fun. And, and he's, you know, that's that gives us somebody younger than us. So Greg and Jack Reed are about the same age. The rest of us, yeah, we're over the hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's amazing. That's amazing. Perhaps one one last part of the yes, of, of the conversation is about these trends. You say that you don't follow the industry, right? You just you just follow your heart. So, but <laughs> but but you get reaction from the industry, I guess, and they will tell you things like, "Oh, we're looking for a shorter version, or we're looking for more balanced stuff, or please don't hurt, don't let players hurt." so much them right right so how how, how how do you feel about these 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 trends that you perhaps uh, receive from the industry yeah, or the symmetry the balance yeah all <laughs> these trends it's for other people okay <laughs> <laughs> basically yeah 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 it's for other people i mean i think that there was you know when you come from there was no industry mm -hmm. to this um well, people will still make good games, but I think the the startling difference is, is measured in volume. There are just thousands and thousands of games. Yeah. So I can't imagine how hard it would be to do something new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot easier to do something new when the market is not there, yeah, <laughs> you know, when, when this, and so, I mean, I think a lot of, you know, and a lot of times they, you know, think, well, maybe it's going to be something in VR, you know, and you know, those guys are going to be out in virtual reality and that'll be the game, it'll be the game. But, um, it, it, it could be imagined that there could be no more games because they've all been done. Now, I, when I was in a game store. I did a I did a thing for scouts scouting over here, and uh, mm -hmm. they were um, kids, uh, boys and girls, about ten or eleven, and they were all scouts, and they were doing it. They had a got a merit badge for game design. So mm -hmm. a guy called me and said, "Come talk to the kids." So I brought all my games, and I said, here's how you do it, guys. <laughs> so it was fun. We had fun, and they had fun. Um, and and was what was interesting. We I brought all the stuff boxes mm -hmm. of stuff, you know, I said, well, here's all this stuff. And the, the, uh, scout guy brought his stuff and, and said, part of it was make a game. And the kids sat down, they just, even, you know, they started building things and make like this, just like that. Yep. I mean, just like it was an intuitive thing for them to make a game. Yep. And, uh, so I think that, um, you know, people are still creative, mm -hmm. you know, times change, things change. 
brings up, you know, ways to make other games. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm glad I'm not just starting, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm quite optimistic about it. I think we have oh, good. Yeah. more to explore. Yeah, there's right? a lot more to explore, yeah. I agree. <laughs> Perfect. So, so I don't know if you wanted to, to bring any other topic or we can leave. Uh, Peter, <laughs> a lot of the... Oh, wait a minute. Do you have a favorite alien? I think the one that switches the number attack, maybe that one. Okay, the, so the two digits, right? The, the two digits. Yeah, on the cards. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm from, uh, I love the loser. I love the one. Yeah, that, I knew that, that you... The loser. Yeah, yeah I, I knew that he was going to say the loser, so that's why. Yeah. The one that switches. It's the only time I can win, apparently. <laughs> 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 Don't you love it? You go in there and you go, mm -hmm. you dig down, and there's the losers, right? Yeah. I got it. It's me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then yeah. you win. And then you, and then you win. Yeah. Then, so we were very happy to see the loser <laughs> in the cosmic duel. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's true. I, you, I said it belongs there. It has yeah. a role. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, we love that one. Yeah. We we'll leave it. We we'll leave it here. Perhaps now is not the time for the for the regular meeple, but for the loser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah, that was an inspiration. You know, we just we just we we said this has to be, so we just put it in there. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the that was really a key thing to do, to mm -hmm. really try to tie the two games together. Yeah, mm. that's uh, that's a nice. Yeah. 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 I was trying to make them have. Uh, I was hoping they'd make it. Uh, the two player and expansion set that fit into Cosmic. But this is a better idea. Uh, that would be, it would get lost there. It reaches away their audience. We're, we're waiting for expansions. Eh? Just, uh, Peter, please. <laughs> <laughs> expansion sets for Cosmic Duel. <laughs> I'll tell Frank. <laughs> Perfect. So, so just uh, remember, guys, uh, to to check uh, Cosmic Encounter if you Cosmic haven't already. Encounter. It's a game of infinite possibilities. I believe it says somewhere, or at least is the feeling that I have when I play it. It's also the, it was also the goal of the of the designers when they did it. Uh, also, check out the the Dune game, uh, which is uh, the new the new version, uh, shorter in time, up to four players. It's out uh, very soon or already out in some stores here and in Spain. And now you have the Catalan and version. And now you of have the exactly. Book. So please, so you, you, you can read as well. Yeah. And and it was a pleasure uh, having you, Peter, here. And, this is fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's uh, let's take. This is. Up. I spent the entire day editing rules for a new game. <laughs> okay, so that's... jointly with Bill, Bill and I, Bill and I were editing rules for like seven hours yesterday and eight hours today. And Rita comes on and he's editing and I'm on here having fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks okay, a lot. So thank thanks you right, so Peter. much thank for you. joining us. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Bye. Uf, Carles, ¿cómo te has quedado después de la entrevista? Pues bueno, en Cutting el sombrero este de un poco de borea sí, o de estrella. Sí, yo, ¿no? por favor, no me mire la cara, porque estoy que en cara de fama mirarlo. Hipnótica me entré y conta una anécdota y una otra anécdota. Rey de anécdota ah, y estoy que ahí. La idea es que te... Que ya no sé. Claro, yo no sé qué, qué, qué esperaba, pero realmente no me es un, una personalidad por crear. Una persona tan entusiasta. Sí, tan, tan esbocharrada, tan, tan directa, tan tal, por crear Cosmic Encounter, ¿no? Y, y claro, es que así, por tal en la idea de... La idea original era, claro, está Cosmic Encounter, antes del duel, ¿vale? Con pa 2. Ahora, en la nueva versión de Dune, es con pa 4, me reduida en Thames, me está... Es, es que es con revisitar es dos shocks clásicos de super sí. culte de... Acompañar. En as una no versión... Adaptarlos a no no Thames. A dos jugadores, el altre a 4, Mulme Scourt, que vendrán claro. expansión seguro, tal, 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 o sea, sí, lo sí, típico sí, sí. de Ara. Y, y en Saturn Cat, la verdad. Claro, y de repente, no, yo pasé a la industria. Yo no me en Saturn Cat, no me chuve, de... Cosme, Sí, Cosme... bueno, pero después sí que se ha hecho un tangente. Hombre, evidentemente, Ana, porque es un autor de chocs. De... Sí, arriba el de Fantasy Fly Games y sí. te digo, Ana, me aburre. Cori con Iesca, el Basil que va a hacer que, que Cosmic Counter Duel es que era. Es que gracias, Cori yo voy es... a en el episodio, pero gracias, gracias. Pero es, Cori es un máquina. <ríe> Porque no hay una cosa que más me lleve el mono de jugar un Cosmic en, en Toches a mí, es que poder jugar un duel, al menos. 
Y este no hay, o sea, la verdad es que me ha semblado de mono increíble, como el que dices, ¿no? Todas las anécdotas que ha contado, los backers, es que son americanos, incluso pa, pa eso, o sea, y no me es, no me es, me fa gracia también que no volví en Daos, o sea, tú relaciones, ¿no? Como shocks americanos, americanos, en Daos. También es que este me comienza a trencarme. La primera regla, no volví en Daos, yo perdón. <laughs> Claro. Pero el rollo achar, el rollo tal, no es, am no es americano, o sea, de repente... Volen sí. que sí, que fuera inclusivo, perdón. Pero volen que fuera inclusivo también me ha trencado, pero bueno. Sí, todo lo que ha comenzado bien, también estoy muy matrencado. Es con agafar una carta de un Sara... Te... Ah, te vas a enterar. Te tiré la sí. carta, le encontré. <ríe> y lo de que chuga en Amesius Net, me sembra todo con mol... Mol bonito, mol tendré. Sí, o me y la raza de que se casa. Ay, la por favor, bright, que le va a hacer la, la neta, tío. La novia. Ay, lo máximo, nano. Ay, yo qué sé. Ay, das que yo me pasa muy bien. Es un... Es algo a, a seguir también. Todo eso que fa... Te hay otros shows que también son pro bochos. Va a tener un poco un show de paraules. Eh, después en, en, en Ion Products y Future Pastimes hace muchas cosas también. Eh, lo de nunca contar cómo arribar en a presentarlo. Contar lo de la Sting en la portada. O sea, es que es todo... Toda la historia, bueno, os convidé a Exacto. disfrutarla igual que nosotros y os comenté si Uchugata Cosmic, si Uchugata Cosmic Duel, si a Dune. A Dune, el Classic, el No, eh, que vos sembra Totaso, que vos sembra Peter o Lotka, un gran, en tres grams, pero a mí, y dice unos comentarios si un parlem. Venga. Ahora sí estoy de acuerdo en ello, en lo de Two Aliens Meeting the Space. <laughs> <laughs> Muy bien, sí, yo, ¿no? En su a la próxima y volvemos a sentir vuestras opiniones, ya que ya sabéis. Adiós, adiós, gracias. <laughs>